my name is Miss Janice and today I'm going to share with you the wisdom of being equally yoked. Before we get started, I wanted to read a scripture that I had found. It's in Psalms, it's chapter 66 and it's verses 16 through 19 and it says, Come and listen all you who fear God and I will tell you what he did for me. For I cried out to him for help, praising him as I spoke. If I had not confessed, confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. Praise God. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father in heaven, Lord, I just pray that as we search out your lessons about the wisdom of being equally yoked, Lord, I pray that you will use the events in my life that it would bring glory and honor to you, but Lord, that they would also be useful, Lord, for these young adults, Lord, that they would not make these mistakes. Lord, I ask that you would um, help them to see the wisdom of being equally yoked, and Lord, that you would use me as your vessel, Lord, to pour out this these understandings to them, and I just ask for your leading and your guiding and for your words, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so I remember when um, my sisters and I, we would get together and we would take our Barbie dolls and we would we play with them. And so we only had one Ken doll and there were three sisters. And so we had three Barbies, one Ken doll, and we would all be trying to um, impress the Ken doll. We were trying to win his affections. And so we dress our Barbies up um, we drive them around in cool cars, uh, and we'd invite Ken over to our pink mansion. Well, none of this is nearly as beautiful as it sounds. We had quite an imagination. The cool cars that we drove were usually either Tonka trucks or um, like a big stick <laughs> that we would put the Barbies on and drive them around. Um, and really, the mansion was really just a shoebox <laughs> that we colored with a pink crayon. Um, just hold on. I'm going to set my Bible down. So I'm going to kind of like, you'll see me go up and down. <laughs> all right. So, um, but all this we did just to impress the Ken doll, to win his heart. Uh, we had no idea what real loving relationships were all about. And, you know, I guess as I got older, I really still didn't have any idea. I remember sitting in a teen class and the subject of being equally and unequally yoked came up. And I really just had no idea what that meant. So um, I want to help explain a that a little bit to you. So I, um, well, I drew a picture. Can you see it? This is a yoke. So what would happen in the olden days, they would take a yoke like this and they would put it on a cow, oxen, Okay, so this part here would fit across their shoulders, and then this loop here would go up underneath their neck. And so there would be two of them. There would be one here, and then another one here. Now, what would happen is if you had a, a larger animal on one side, and then a smaller animal on the other side, they would kind of be like this. Okay, so you just imagine me with maybe, I, I'm only like maybe five foot. Okay, somebody who's six foot and, you know, weighs 250 pounds and then there's me. So what's going to happen is we're going to be unequally yoked. <laughs> so what happens is as we try to pull the burden behind us, um, one of us is going to be stronger and one's going to be weaker. One's taller, one's shorter, and we walk at different paces. And so one would be going forward being able to carry more and have a longer stride and then the other one would be smaller carrying you know having a shorter stride and weaker and that would be me <laughs> so but anyway uh, what would happen is it would cause the animals to go around in this in a circle and if you're trying to plow a field you don't want it in a circle you want nice straight rows and that wouldn't happen so instead of them working together they were working at odds you know, to one another. They, they weren't working together. And that really is my whole point. They were at odds with one another. And so that was because they are not equal. I'm going to put my picture down. As um, created people, 
searching out for our life mate, we want we want to have equal thinking. We want to believe in the same ways. We want to have our spiritual values to be equal. You know, I didn't think all that was really a big deal, but it is. And well, here's here's my story. So imagine a younger me, long hair, um, still short, <laughs> didn't grow very tall, but a younger me. Now, I meet a really great looking guy, okay? He was, and I thought he was the greatest. I thought he was so cool because he drove a really cool car. And did I mention that he was good looking? Yeah, he was really good looking. So anyway, I had no idea what he thought about life and what his moral values are and what was important to him. But that wasn't important to me at the time. And so I didn't really understand or the need for wisdom of being equally yoked. Now I'm, now I'm not living a life with, um, so at this time I'm talking about, I wasn't living a life um, with Christian values. Um, so when my sister, who offers to pick me up and take me to church, um, offers that, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to. I was, I was like, yeah, I don't know. And she's a pest. And she was persistent. And she called me almost every week. So you want to go to church this week? And I'd say, ah, I don't know. And, but she never gave up. That's the thing. She didn't give up. And finally, I relented. All right. So I, I really wasn't sure if I wanted to go. I wasn't sure if I would be accepted, um, be accepted back, actually, because, yes, I accepted back. I this was a church that I was familiar with. It was a church that I grew up with and the people knew me. Um, but the thing was, even though I had gone to church and even though I knew God um, and I knew Jesus, I hadn't surrendered to him and I hadn't let him in my heart. And and I hadn't surrendered to his love. And even though I knew what was right, I wasn't following it. And well, I went back to church. So meanwhile, that great looking guy who drove the really cool car, he didn't want to go to church. I asked him, I invited him. I tried to find a way to encourage him to come to church. Um, I invited him to so many different things, so many different outings, so many um, fun things, not just church, but fellowship, you know, uh, group meetings and, and things like that. Um, so anyway, I wanted to restart my relationship with Jesus. And I wanted this great looking guy to be a part of that. But he had never had a relationship with Jesus, and he didn't even want one now, which he very specifically told me. Um, he just wanted to keep doing what he was doing, and he was angry. He was angry at me. He was angry at the church because um, we weren't doing things together anymore. So he never wanted to go to church with me, um, and he didn't go to any of those things, any of those group meetings. He said they were nothing but a bunch of goody two-shoes and hypocrites. And so we stopped doing things together. Now, you know, maybe you don't think that that sounds all that awful. So, you know, we, you know, we weren't just hanging out together. But it was more than that. I, I was feeling lonely. I felt really lonely. And now he was angry. He was angry all the time because I had changed. It was me. I had changed. Now... Now there were arguments, constant arguments. And, you know, he would, where are you going? What are you doing? Oh, I know, you must be going to church. And so he'd start berating me and mocking me and, you know, every time. And then when he found out that I was um, giving tithe and offerings, um, money to the church, oh boy, that came a huge, huge boom argument. Then... The Holy Spirit started speaking to my heart about my relationship and where it was not only with this great looking guy with the cool car, but where my relationship was with Jesus. So I, I began to identify with the woman at, well, at the well, and I knew my life was not how Jesus wanted me to live it. And so um, 
I wanted to live my life for Jesus, but I couldn't live it the, the way I was living right then. I, I couldn't. I couldn't leave it, live it for Jesus. So um, I had a decision to make. And so I told this really great looking guy with a really cool car um, that things had to change. Now the arguments became more so. They actually became attacks. Not just verbal attacks, but they became physical. And I was really afraid. Um, eventually, and it took a long time, um, almost 10 years. That's a whole lot of headache and heartache and struggle. And, you know, I, I had to really grapple with, with, with God I, in prayer as to how to do this, how to um, change my life. Finally, I asked this great looking guy um, to leave. In fact, I even had to ha threaten to have him um, removed by law. So you can see I really didn't listen to the teen group leaders when they tried to explain to me about being equally yoked. I thought, yeah, 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 whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter because if you're in love, everything's going to be okay, right? Right? Everything's going to be okay. Not. That did not happen. But here is the rest of my story. So my relationship with the great looking guy um, with the really cool car, it ended. Um, and I began praying. I prayed. I mean, I mean really praying um, because I wanted to do God's will. That's what I wanted to do. And I found this verse in the Bible at that time. Um, and it really struck my heart. And it's 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. And it said, The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved, it is the very power of God. Wow. I believe that God was saving me by his power. So I began praying for his truth. That's what I wanted. And for someone that I could share my life with. Um, a Christian man who would share my faith, um, my love for God, and also, if it would be God's will, I asked that this guy would be attracted to me. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't want him to be ugly. <laughs> so I really had some things to learn. But you know what? God answered my prayer. I was so amazed. You know, I was still so very young in my faith. Um, I was still learning to trust God. Um, but I found that he was faithful and that his promises were real and that he cared about me and he cared about my life. So then I met Waylon. He was a Christian. And I thought, wow, okay. <laughs> He's great looking. Okay, I found him attractive. I had asked God to allow this life mate to be attractive to me. And you know what? God provided that for me. And he had my attention. So as uh, Waylon and I um, began to study the Bible together, um, this is where God answered another um, part of my prayer. His truth. I wanted to know God's truth. And that's when God introduced me to the truth of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I had prayed for it. I had prayed for a Christian man, and I had prayed for truth, and he had blessed me with both. What I, what I didn't know, that God was also helping me and showing me how to be equally yoked. You know, we like the same things. We had the same interests. Um, we had the same values. And God was leading us in the same spiritual truths. We both wanted to follow God. You know, um, I, that was just amazing to me. You know, we were in so, we're, so many things we were in agreement on. Tithing and church attendance and ministry. Ministry. We did things together with God. That was amazing to me. So now... You may be thinking, eh, all right, whatever, that's pretty extreme. Not everybody is unequally yoked and has all that happen. 
Um, and that may be true. That's very true. But I do know, here's what I do know, that when you're not equally yoked, it's hard. It's really hard to experience all that God has to offer you. It really is. It's so let's just think about this. Even, even if you have a supportive life mate and maybe you just think a little bit different, um, you know, they're a good person. Um, or maybe you both love God and maybe you just live out your faith a little bit different. You know what? Okay, I'm, I'm going to say it. You're still not equally yoked. Now, you know, even though Waylon and I are equally yoked, um, that doesn't mean that we don't have disagreements. We have disagreements. Um, we even have outright arguments. <laughs> but you know what? That's just part of being a couple. That's just life. You know, people aren't always going to agree about everything. But you know what? God has given me a life mate and a husband that loves God first. And we keep the truths of the Seventh-day Adventist Church together as a couple. And together as a couple, um, that, that's the most amazing part, we, together as a couple. And together we put our trust in God. And you know what? Then we can get through this life. So now I can experience all that God has to offer all that he has to offer me because he wants me to love him, to serve him, and he has given me an equally yoked life mate to do that. And I thank God for answering my prayers. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father in heaven, Lord, I pray for each person who is, are hearing these words. Lord, I pray that they will search out your word, that they will search out your truth, and Lord, that you would provide a life mate for them so that they can serve you together. Lord, I pray that you would just help us in all things to always want to serve you. And Lord, that as we look forward to the time that we are looking um, to find a life mate, Lord, that you will provide them with that person that you have handpicked, hand selected. Lord, that they will be praying for that person. And Lord, in the time that is just right, you will reveal who that person is for each one of them. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for me. And Lord, I thank you that you have provided a life mate that I am equally yoked with so that I can serve you to the fullest of my abilities and that you have given me. And I just thank you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, go find that life mate. <laughs>